Merry Christmas, everyone. Holiday season is here. It's that special time of the year where you all gather in front of your Houdini and curse at the console. And to get the holiday spirit started, I thought we'd build a Christmas tree ornament or a snow globe or something like that. However, it ended up looking like that. So I guess it's more like an alien abstract-ish thing. So happy alien holidays, I guess. But I will go over how in principle built a snow globe and then how it turned into this. This was kind of a happy accident. So what I did was I dropped down a sphere, dove in there, and then set this primitive type to polygonal mesh like this. Increase the rows, maybe 48, and columns by 80, like this. Let's get rid of the grid. And then I clip this. And I want to use this as an emitter for our snow slash particles. So let's drop down a scatter stop here. Let's set its total count to 100. Uncheck the relax iterations, wire this up and highlight it. And in the seed, I just want to drop in a short expression, dollar, voila, dollar FF. So the global seed is identical to our frame. So this wiggles around like this. As I'm currently totally into Vellum due to the course I have over at Patreon, let's build this using Vellum. And I want to use the Vellum grains for that. So drop down Vellum configure grain, maybe dial back the grain size like this. Then let's wire this into a dot net. Attach those three ports to the dot net. And also we want to create a collider. So this should collide with a sphere. So let's take this sphere here and just transform it slightly. And let's increase its scale a tiny bit. So the particles do not immediately intersect with that sphere. Maybe like that and then wire this in here as a collider. So let's dive inside the dot net and we want to have some gravity here. So these particles slash snowflakes get pulled down. Then let's drop down a static object and a merge. And we could either wire this through a static solver or wire this in directly here and drop down a vellum solver with a vellum object and a vellum source. And if you want to know more of what this stuff does or how Vellum works in general, you may want to head over to our Patreon and wire this in here. So within the Vellum object, we don't want to initialize our geometry. So let's cut that out and instead paste it in the source here and do the same thing for our initial constraints, cut them out and paste them here in the source. Also within the static object, I want to link up my third input on my dot net. So I'm going to paste this expression and just exchange this index here with the index for our third slot like this. So this in theory should give us well, this. Okay, so let's hide the static object now uncheck display geometry and hit play again. So yeah, partially okay. So I want this to emit not only on the first frame, but continuously. So in the vellum source, I will set emission type to continuous Hit play again. And that is working well. All I have to do now for the grains to work properly is increase our sub steps to say five and let's have 20 constraint iterations hit play again. And I've got this really, really heavy, thick and grainy snow falling down here. So what keeps snow from rushing down from the sky is some kind of drag. So let's add a drag force here after the gravity. And let's scale the force by four and the torque as well. So the higher these numbers, the more drag in your particles. Let's hit play again. And now it's kind of raining slash snowing down quietly. Let's just slowly start our snow by heading into the scatter stop here and animating our total count here from zero on the first frame. Let's set the keyframe by alt clicking in here and then go to frame 48 and set this thing to 100 and keyframe this again. Maybe open up our curve editor by shift clicking in here or going to Windows animation editor. And then what I want to do is have this ease in a bit like this. Let's check. So yeah, it slowly starts in and fades in. Now here is where the interesting stuff develop. What I wanted to do is add a wind force. So just to give this whole thing a bit of a turbulence. And I think I scaled it to something like four and had the roughness set to, I think, three frequency to three by three by three or something like that. And set the noise to sparse convolution. Then hit play. And 
And what you can see here is this clumping starts and it drifts to a side. That is because in the wind, the overall velocity is set to be one along the z-axis. So let's set that to zero. So only the noise comes through here. So now we get those weird strands, those root-like structures forming here. That is due to the self-collision behavior of the grains. So they kind of form those clumpy roots here. I think I decreased the grain size quite a bit still. So in the vellum constraints, let's dial back the grain size a bit. And in the scatter on the second keyframe, let's increase the total count to 200 like this. Head back into our .NET and resim this. So we end up with some weird behavior like this. And you can tweak this mainly by dialing in the noise parameters here in the wind force. I quite like this already. So let's add some trails to those particles and save this first. Head up one level. So let's just highlight this and we only want the vellum object one. And maybe it's a good idea to cache this out into a file cache. So we don't have to resem every time. So let's save that to disk. And after we're done saving, check load from disk. So I now load this cache and can freely scrub without resaming every time. So let's add a trail. And for the trail here, I want to trail it as connected polygons and I don't want to close the rows, but I want to have the trail length exactly 240 frames on the last frame. So let's connect this up, highlight it, and we end up with those intricate trail structures here. Let's append a null here append it to the file cache and call this one out underscore parts for particles. Go up on level and let's talk a bit about rendering this. I want to use Redshift for that because I've got a GPU workstation here at the office and Redshift in general works a bit better and quicker for me than Mantra as I didn't invest heavily in CPU rendering hardware. So when you got Redshift installed automatically with creating this geometry node, you already created the Redshift OBJ tag here. If it didn't do that, go to Redshift here and just click OBJ Parms. These are my trails here. So I want to go to Strands, check render object as strands and either render them as strip or or as a cylinder. Let's try strip. It's a bit more lightweight than the cylinders. Crank down the tessellation subdivisions all to zero for quicker rendering. And we don't need high subdivisions with that much detail here. And let's set our default scale to 0.02 for now. And let's ignore the p-scale attribute. So this will drive the width of my strands here instead of a p-scale attribute that I might have on the geo. Okay, let's create another geo sop. And in here, object merge the particles. So I'll select my sphere geometry and the out parts null that we created. So these are the particles. Head up one level again and in the Redshift OBJ tab, under particles, check render object as particles. And now I just want to use their p scale attribute that we set when setting up the vellum grains. Let's add some Redshift light dome for now and also create a second sphere that we're going to use as our glass orb. So let's set this one to be a polygonal mesh 2, 48 by 80. And let's increase the scale a bit, say to 1.05. Let's head up again. And I've got a light. I need a camera. So control click on the camera and lock it to the viewport. Let's frame this accordingly. And let's create a grid as a background. Why this below our camera and translate it to say minus 10. And within the grid, set it to be oriented along the XY plane like this. Maybe let's move it out a bit further to minus 20 and let's scale it by 1.7 along the x-axis and maybe increase the uniform scale a bit. So I just have my background that's pinned to my camera. Next, let's close all these tabs here, pin our current tab and create two new tabs. You can also create tabs by pressing control T here. So I want to set the last one to my output here. That's where my redshift nodes will be as soon as I hit redshift here. And let's set up my rendering. So within the redshift tab, what I want to do is within the optimizations tab, I want to increase the reflection and refraction trace depth to eight and the combined depth to 16. Also, I want to enable global illumination here, setting both primary and secondary to brute force and maybe increase the number of GI bounces a tiny bit like this. In the second tab here, the middle one, I'll switch to my material context, mats. And I'm going to create a redshift material builder, drop it down, dive in there. And I'll just wire up the standard RS material into my surface here, set its reflection weight to zero, so it's all matte, and set its color to 0 0.02 for a background color. Let's head up, call this one BG for background. 
duplicate it, call this one glass, dive in there, and I'll make this one easy and just select the glass preset here. Let's copy this one more time and call this one foggy underscore glass. And within here, within the glass preset, let's scroll down a bit and we'll be dialing in the single scattering. That's the single subsurface scattering here to have a very light bluish transmittance color and a bit of scattering in here. But we'll do that once we're rendering. So let's just assign those materials in the OBJ level. I've got this sphere. This will be my foggy sphere. Let's duplicate it one more time. Just call this one glass and we'll scale it up a tiny bit too. So we have an outer glass sphere and then the inner foggy sphere and within those two spheres are our strands and our particles. And by the way, I will need a material for the strands and particles as well. I forgot that, so back into the matte context. Let's just copy the BG material, paste it there and call it parts underscore strands. Dive in there and let's just set its color to be a bright white, 0.9 and maybe have a bit of transmittance. So maybe 0 0.5 and let's set the transmittance color to be all white like this. Let's finally assign those things. So these are my particles. So on the rendering tab, we'll assign the parts underscore strands material. This should be my strands. Let's assign the same material here. And of course, by renaming that, I wasted all that file cache that I wrote out. So let's dive in here and within the file cache, let's link this one up again, just by pointing directly to its location on your hard drive. Go up one level, assign the parts and strands material. The foggy glass will be assigned the foggy glass material and the glass material, that's the glass. And finally, the grid is the BG material. Let's save this and click on render view. And that looks super weird because our light dome hasn't assigned a shader to it. So let's just under shader assign an HDR, for example, our trusty old shady urban. And let's dial in the foggy material first. So under material, let's head into the foggy glass here. And what I want to do, scroll down and under subsurface, dial in transmittance and scatter coefficient. So let's start with the transmittance. Let's set this one to a blue green ish color, maybe like this. And let's increase the scatter slowly. And maybe also our absorption scale to say five. So we get this greenish tint here. Maybe dial back the tint a bit, but also lower the value of the color. So we get this dark green grayish look. Also, let's increase the scatter to something of our liking. And that looks kind of interesting how those strands disappear and reappear when they are close to the surface or away from the surface. Let's work a bit on the lighting here. And within the RS light dome, let's rotate this a bit. So this bright spot here is not showing up so much. So let's transform it, rotate it along the Y axis and dial back its intensity under shader, set its intensity to 0.1 or maybe even 2.05 like this. And let's light this with a few area lights. So let's click on the RS light, control click on it to create it at the position we're just looking at. Make sure it's locked to the viewport and then move it up to the sphere. So it's just looking down straight onto our sphere like this and then unlock it again and select our main camera. And this already starts looking interesting. However, this is missing a bit of rim light here. So let's just take a look at what's happening here. On the one hand, let's move this thing closer to our sphere, then increase its size. So in the lights tab, on the area, let's set its shape to disk and increase its size to be four by four by four like this. And also I want to dial back the spread so the background isn't illuminated like this. Now this is getting way too bright, of course. So in the shader properties, let's dial back the intensity multiplier too. Maybe something like that and move this thing a bit behind the sphere, but point it towards it like this. So we get a nice rim up here. Maybe move it a bit closer. And yes, you might say this is now visible in our rendering. So let's disable the visibility for the camera in the lights tab. Uncheck visible here. So we now only see the reflection and the illumination. And maybe the reflection is a bit too harsh for us. And we can dial that back by just dialing back the specular scale here. And if I dial it all to zero, there is no spec happening there at all. Let's copy this two times and build kind of a rim light, a butterfly light on the sides by just transforming this all to zero on the rotation and then just moving it 
the one side of a sphere like this. Let's copy this, rotate it around 180 degrees, and translate it on the other side of the sphere. And now those reflections start to show up really bright, so let's disable them by selecting both lights and just dialing their specular scale way down to say 0.05. Also, the light is too bright, so within the shader, let's dial back the intensity multiplier too, so we get mainly light from this top soft light here. And now my scattering is a bit too strong, so in the foggy glass material, let's dial back the scatter scale and maybe also the absorption a bit. Yeah, absorption scale of 3 and a scatter scale of 1.5. Seems decent. Now this is still a bit bright up here, so let's dial back the main light too. Maybe find a different angle with our camera, lock this to a viewport, and let's connect those lights to our camera too. Just make sure under transform that you check keep position when parenting so they stay in place where we move them. However, now they should move in sync with our background and with our camera, so we can try and figure out if we can find another angle that looks a bit more beautiful. And we're looking at this orb here, and that looks kind of promising. The last few things I'd like to do will crank up our render times to an absurd level, so they might not be for everyone, but I want to do first in the foggy glass, I want to switch its IOR to something more akin to water, so 1.33, and then in our glass material. Let's set this one to be more crystal-like, 1.7, and this will kill your render time. Increase the dispersion. So you get those nice chromatic aberrations, those rainbow colors on the edges of our trails. And admitted, this is one that won't render quickly. However, I like the looks of it really nice. So that is how one accident that happened while I was trying to come up with a snow globe led to this abstract, more alien looking globe. And I hope you like it. It's not your typical Christmas thingy, but it's a nice thing to look at. I really like the looks of it. And I especially like those shaders with their scattering and the depth they lend to this whole thing. I will attach the scene file for this, not only the one that we built, but also the one I used for rendering, which includes an After Effects project that shows what I did in post and compositing. As with any image that goes out there, you should try and run your images through compositing just to do a final grading, not do much, just some curves, levels, and this will bring your image to another level. It'll give it additional depth. So with that, I wish you a very abstract, very alien, but very beautiful holiday season. A happy new year. May 2019 be just great. Thanks so much for your amazing support. Without you, all this would not be possible. And a special thank you goes to our supporters and patron, especially Kyoko Sakane, Important Looking Pirates, Joseph Howerton, Derek A. Johnson, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol, Rob Ryan Jr., and Mohamed Al-Abri. Thanks so much, guys.